Arrays are found in most programming languages, and they simply allow data to be grouped together. So if we take a look at this, and we just grab a pot of pens, the pot is essentially the array it's holding everything together and you have all the pens inside of the pot these are the elements of the array this is what's grouped together so i can say that pot has an array of pens in it that doesn't mean that all of the pens are the same they could be a different size shape type color and so on and so forth so just think of an array as grouping data together and in javascript you have two types of grouping. You either have an array or an object, and this goes for most programming languages. Now, in JavaScript, arrays are objects, but they're just a special type of object. And we'll talk more about this later on when we actually get to see it being produced in the browser. But all I want you to do is remember that all an array is is a grouping together of multiple elements. So you could say multiple pens. I have an array of pens in front of me. I have an array of all sorts of this and that. Just take it literally and the understanding of arrays will become very simple to you. And the wonderful thing about right now in this lecture is you're really going to understand that grouping data together is very, very powerful. That's how complex applications work. They group data, they associate data. For example, take your mind back to when I was talking about a graphics editor, how each image is an object. Well, an array is a type of object and it groups data together. Without that grouping of data together, you can't really have powerful applications. So now let's transform my analogy of arrays, which is the pot of pens, into actual code. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, create a box to store our array or variable. Now, always remember that if we were to, let's say, create an array, how would we reference it? How would we target it? Well, you always have to stick it in a box. And that way, when you stick it in a box, stick it in a container, a variable it has a name and then we can reference that name and target that specific piece of data which in our case is an array so i'm going to create a variable so I type in var then we need to give this variable a name which i'll give it the name of pot and i'm going to assign a value to the pot i'm also going to pop in that ending semicolon i recommend you do that because as you're assigning data you may forget to put that ending semicolon in there so i always like putting that ending semicolon in there as soon as i put the equal sign in then we need to create an array and we do this by defining an array literal so what does this mean well this literally means we're defining an array so when i say array literal I'm talking about these square brackets right here. Opening and closing square brackets literally means we're creating an array. That's why we call it an array literal. And now what I can do is I can go ahead and start to add in elements into the array. Now we're just going to be working with primitive data and we're going to be working with the string primitive data first of all. So I'm just going to say red pen. Then I'm going to add in another pen to my pot. So I put in the comma. This is very important. Every single element in your array must be separated by a comma. And then I can go ahead and type in yellow pen. And then I can finally add in, let's say, a blue pen. Also, JavaScript isn't too bothered about white space. You know, you can pop in some white space here just to organize it and sort of make it a bit more visual if you want to white space isn't a huge deal and now when i hit return it's going to return undefined because again we didn't request any information from the just-in-time compiler rather we gave it a command a statement to run which it did and that was it we didn't ask it to give us any information so now that we've created this variable this box and placed inside of that box a pot of pens if you will we want to now call this variable so i can say pot like so now don't forget where we're creating this pot variable it's being created in the global scope which means the pot variable is attached to the window object or is a property in the window object now and it stores our array this is very important because again we can access this pot variable from wherever we are in our program it's globally accessible so what i can do is to really understand this is print out the window object and we want to go all the way down till we start reaching this part right here and we can see 
pot is defined. It's an array with three elements in it. Now you may notice something very similar with the syntax here, the way it's written. Just take a look at this. What does it remind you of? I'm hoping it kind of reminds you of an object. Since I've shown you objects and sort of the general syntax, I'm hoping you kind of identified that because that then means that an array is in fact an object type. It's a type of object in JavaScript. It's very, very simple. Now, an array is a little bit different to a basic object because what it does is instead of using literal names or standard strings, what it does is it has a number system and each number is an element in the array. So our first string has the index of zero. This is also why we call arrays zero indexed. That's because the first element in the array has the index of zero and then it goes up from there. This is very, very important. We remember arrays are zero indexed. Then also we have one, which is our second element, which is yellow pen and two, which is the third element in our array. But don't forget it's zero indexed. So it has the index of two. Now we also have the length and the length will actually tell us how many elements are in the array. So if I call the length property on an array, it will tell me how many pieces of data, how many elements are in that array. And also note that length is not zero indexed. So it doesn't show us the length of two, it shows us the length of three. So it started at one and counted up from there. And there is a very good reason for this. And you'll be able to see why later on. But for right now, the length property will tell you from the starting index of one, how many elements are in your array, which we have three elements or three strings in our array. So now that we have our pot with three elements inside of it, we've defined our array. How do we extract that data? This is also extremely important. So to access one of those elements within our array, what we need to do is target the box that contains our array. So I'm going to target the pot variable and then we open and close these square brackets. This is very important. Whenever you want to take an element out of an array, you need to target the array and then put in the square brackets. And in the square brackets, you want to type in the index of the element you want to pull out. So this is a number. Now remember the index starts at zero. So red pen is zero, yellow pen is one, and blue pen is two, as you've seen in the window object. So all I need to do now is let's say type in zero and I will get red pen. And please do remember, this is why we say an array is zero index. The first element in the array has the index of zero. So I go ahead and put in an ending semicolon because I'm giving it that command and finishing that command. So what JavaScript did is it went up into the loft, had a look at all those boxes and said, I want that box with the name pot. It grabbed that box out, it opened that box up, there's our array. And it said, okay, we have lots of values here, but he wants specifically the value with the index of zero. So that is the red pen string. So it just returned that string data to us. And we can tell the JIT compiler to go ahead and fetch the second element in the array with the index of one. And you'll notice we get yellow pen. And finally, the third element in the array, which has the index of two. And there you have it. You can extract information out of the array. Now on top of that, let's go ahead and target the pot variable again, and we're going to assign a new value. Now I don't need to type in var again, don't forget because I've already defined this variable. So what I need to do now is open and close my square brackets and define an array literal again. So I'm literally defining an array and don't forget, I'm going to put an ending semicolon in there. So what we're doing here is we're deleting the previous array and we're assigning a new array in its place. Now you can have all types of data stored in an array. So I could have a number, then a string, so I could say hello. I can even have other primitive types like nan. I can store nan in the array. I can store null in the array. I can store undefined in the array. 
Now, don't forget null and undefined are values. Again, just think of the analogy of opening the box and there's a note at the bottom of the box saying, sorry, there's nothing there. Now, technically, you do have a note inside the box saying there's nothing there. So null and undefined are values, but they don't mean anything. It just means it's empty. So when we try to access these elements in the array, such as null and undefined, it's going to return as null and undefined saying, look, there's nothing in this particular element in our array. I can also go ahead and store equation. So I can say 20 plus 5. That is an element in the array. I can also, again, store elements in the array that are concatenated. So for example, I can say hello, space, then a plus, and then world. So hopefully you're starting to see a pattern here. So when I was showing you all about primitive data, I'm just sticking that primitive data into this array to really give you an example of all the different types of primitive data you can stick in your array. And also, not just primitive data, but a combination of primitive data, such as mathematical equations and also concatenation of strings. You'll notice, there we go, our array has been created. Now you'll notice with the returned array, it's a lot like working with variables directly, where if you were to, let's say, store this equation directly in a variable and you called that variable, it would just return the value. Well, the element in the array is just the value, the sum total of your equation. And the same with strings that you want to concatenate together. If I was to store that in a variable and then call that variable, all I get back is the concatenated string. So if we take a look at this now, I can target the box with the label of pot. So I'm telling the just-in-time compiler, I want that box. I want you to open up that box, which contains our array that we've just created. And again, in the square brackets, we can pull out an element within the array. So let's go ahead and pull out, let's say, 25. Well, how do I know how to get that one? Well, we go zero. One, two, three, four, and five. And there you go, it returned that specific element out of the array because we targeted the array and we said we wanted that specific element out of the array. If you don't put in those square brackets, just like before, if you just target the variable with the array in, it will return the entire array. So it's up to you what you want to do. Now, finally, let's take a look at that all important length property, which I showed you very quickly within the window object. And we had a look at the pot array when it was finally created or initialized into our window object. And it did have a length property, which again will tell us how many elements are in the array. Now this is very important because when you start making dynamic applications, your dynamic applications can start adding in elements into the array dynamically. So it's not necessarily you set an array up and you can't change it. You can change an array and you can add things to an array and you can take things away from the array. So how does your program then know how many elements are in the array? Well, it uses the length property. So I can target the variable that contains our array and I can say dot length. This will grab the length property and return the value. So I can see there are seven elements in the array and please do note that the length has the index of one. This isn't a zero index. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, seven elements in the array. Now, when you access the array, then it becomes zero index. So this is zero, one, two, and likewise, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. But when you say dot length, the first element in the array has the index of one. Now you may be asking why does dot length return the elements with a one based index instead of a zero based index. I'll explain this later and it will become very apparent why when we move on to for loops and so on and so forth. But that'll be later on in the course. Now I'm going to leave things here because what I want you to do is go away from this lecture. Don't watch the next lecture straight away. What I want you to do is create your own arrays with all types of primitive data and so 
some advanced elements such as equations and concatenation. Please, please do these examples. They will help you tremendously. But not only that, what I want you to do is after you've created that array, I want you to find that array by typing in window into the console, opening the window object and finding your array and look at the structure. Look at how it's built in JavaScript. This will give you an immense understanding, immense knowledge of what an array is, and it will give you a better sense of this language, since JavaScript is very, very object-oriented.